As we head closer to the end of the NRL regular season, I thought what a great time to re-rank the best fullbacks in the NRL in 2022. I'll be comparing where the club's fullbacks ranked in the last video made in 2021, acknowledging how many spots up or down the club's best fullback has moved in a year. In the 16th spot is the St. George Illawarra Dragons, with Cody Ramsey at the back. Previously, number 7th on the list with Matt Dufty. One of the biggest drops of any club on this list in the fullback position has to be the St. George Illawarra Dragons as they now sit in last after the departure of Matt Dufty. With it originally planned that Tyrell Sloan would be the replacement fullback, coach Anthony Griffin quickly discarded the youngster, selecting Cody Ramsey for the majority of this season. In his 8 appearances at the back, Ramsey has 5 tries, 3 tries and 37 line breaks. It's statistically been Ramsey's best season of his career as he's done relatively well at the back, but he's still relatively new to the position in the NRL. In the 15th spot, it's the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs with Jake Avrillo, previously number 12th on the list with Corey Allen. Behind the previously ranked Corey Allen, Matt Dufty, Avrillo found himself being shifted around the back line before finding his spot at the fullback position for the Doggies. He's made the spot his own over the second half of the year and has been great in support play. It's still under question whether Avrillo's skill set suits the fullback role, as he is still without a try assist so far this year. He's definitely lively and agile, but will need to work on his ball playing ability if he was to remain a starter at the fullback position in the NRL. Also, isn't it crazy how high I was on Corey Allen prior to the 2021 season? He's only played for the club three times in 2022. In the 14th spot, it's the Brisbane Broncos with Tessie New and Tamari Martin, previously 15th with Jermaine Asako. I've put New and Martin as the Broncos fullbacks, with both players having a similar amount of games played over the season. Both bring very different skill sets. New being an aggressive and shifty ball runner who is ranked 4th in the NRL in tackle breaks, averaging 5.4 a game. On the other hand, Tamari Martin is a natural half and is much silkier, providing link-up play between the halves and the outside backs. The Broncos' win ratio is insane when Martin is at the back, and I wouldn't be surprised if he becomes the first-choice fullback heading into the finals. With Martin off to the Warriors, New will inherit the number one jersey, but will have to play incredibly well to fight off Reese Walsh on his return to Brisbane. Teenth spot is the Canberra Raiders with Xavier Savage, previously number six on this list with Shards Nicole Cookstar. A drop from number six in the fullback rankings to 13th may seem like an issue for Raiders fans, but in reality, they have one of the more exciting fullback prospects on their hands. Xavier Savage is electric in support play and in open space, but is still incredibly young and will have to remove the errors present in his game. A top 10 kick returner in the NRL who made the number one jersey his own since round 12, Savage has had four tries and four try assists in the role. Replacing Nicol Klukstar will be a tough task, who is one of the best defensive fullbacks in the NRL and is insanely durable. I had him ranked six for a reason in last year's video because of his strong effort-based play that coach Ricky Stewart loved. Savage will have to replicate the toughness defensively if he wants to stay the permanent number one at the Raiders. In the 12th spot for the West Tigers, it's Dane Laurie, previously 16th, it was also Dane Laurie. Dane Laurie has improved his position like predicted in last year's video. A player who I think has the potential to move to the top six of fullbacks in the near future, Laurie has not benefited at all playing in a struggling Tigers side. With very few attacking opportunities, he's been unable to showcase that creativity around the try line, but has shown flashes of brilliance at the back. The Tigers attack is stagnant without his linking play as he sweeps around the back. My worry for Laurie is his size. We've already seen him succumb to multiple injuries with the Tigers. The side is often on the back foot in the majority of their games. He's having to take tough carries out of his ends consistently. Laurie's effort and desire can't be questioned though, and I think his attacking numbers will only increase if the Tigers can start playing better as a team. In the 11th spot, it's the New Zealand Warriors with Reese Walsh. Previously fourth was Roger Tuivasa Shek in last year's video. A big drop off for the Warriors, which is to be expected when one of the elite fullbacks in the league leaves your side. The Warriors are in trouble at the back with Reese Walsh leaving next year to the Broncos, as they are without a ready replacement. For the time being though, he's their best fullback. There has been regression in his game this year after his barnstorming 2021, but the fact that the Warriors have been woeful, and with Walsh on the way out, he probably is not fully invested in the club. Reese Walsh is still an electric player who should thrive next year alongside Mim and Reynolds, who will most likely return back to that 2021 form. Walsh's agility, passing and kicking ability are all outstanding for a fullback of his age. I do believe he needs to put on some muscle, reduce his errors, which are the highest of any fullback, and improve defensively, but there really isn't a lack of effort with Walsh. He's always sniffing out the ball. Expect his try, try assist and kick return numbers near the top of the fullback rankings next year with Brisbane. In the number 10 spot, it's the Gold Coast Titans with AJ Brimson, previously 8th on the list with AJ Brimson as well. Titans spine is a shambles at the moment. You could put either Campbell or Brimson here as the club's best fullback, but I've gone with Brimo purely because of his experience. 
Brimstone hasn't been bad by any means in 2022, nothing exceptional though, but definitely not bad. There has been a regression in his attacking stats from his excellent 2020 season, but again, much like the others on the bottom of this list, it's hard to do much as a fullback when your club isn't performing as well. Brimson is one of the best support players in the competition who is solid in defence and has a great motor. His numbers in 2022 have been okay, but the club is completely unsure with who is starting and where. Until there's some stability in the Titans' spine, I don't think whether it be Campbell or Brimson will reach their full potential at the Titans. In the ninth spot for the Cronulla Sharks is Will Kennedy. Previously 14th, it was also Will Kennedy. Kennedy has improved tremendously over the past year and is near the top of all the ranking categories for fullbacks. Second in try assists, sixth in run meters, and in the top 10 in tries, Will Kennedy has been excellent in complementing both Hines and Moylan. He's been a key part of a side that looks destined for the top four, and is who I believe to be one of the most underrated backs in the entire competition. One area that Kennedy still struggles in is his ability to break tackles. His small frame sees him dragged in tackles, but he's consistently contributing in other areas. He's gone from a fringe first grader to a quality starter in a matter of just a year. In the 8th spot, it's the Parramatta Eels with Clint Gutherson. Previously third on the list was also Clint Gutherson. Gutherson was ranked incredibly high in the previous list video, and for good reason. He was the leader in 2020 for all fullbacks in try assists, kick return meters, and support plays. There has been a regression in all these numbers in 2022. His 17 try assists in 2020 has now become 10, whilst he's also seeing 3-year lows in average run meters, down 35 per game, and also his lowest tackle efficiency in the past 3 years. Gutherson is still an awesome fullback who plays with immense passion and has a huge input on whether the Eels are so successful. He's crucial for Parramatta and should still be regarded as a star, just outside of the superstar echelon. In the seventh spot, it's the North Queensland Cowboys with Scott Drinkwater. Previously 13th on the list was also Scott Drinkwater. Drinkwater was criticized previously for his high error rate and for the fact he was only really playing at fullback occasionally. Starting off the season, not even in the matchday squad, Drinkwater has not looked back after being selected, putting it all together this year. He leads fullbacks in try assists and is in the top 10 in try scorers and tackle breaks in the competition. His contributions have led directly to Cowboys wins, with a team 12-3 in matches played by Drinkwater. A career high in 2022 in both line breaks and run meters show how great of a season he is having at the back. He sits with Gutherson, just outside the superstar level of fullbacks. In the sixth spot is the Newcastle Knights with Kalen Ponga, previously fifth in the list, was also Kalen Ponga. The Queensland Wonder Kid who dominated Game 3 of State of Origin falls down one spot in the updated list. Now you might be asking why. Kalen is one of the most skilled and entertaining players in our sport but finds himself outside the top five. Well it's honestly some things that are partially out of his control. His recent injury history hasn't been great, he's missed 35 games in the past four years. He also sits on one of the worst teams in the competition with no real structure in the halves to help him out. I think we saw in State of Origin how good Ponga can really be with quality teammates around him. Ponga has had career low stats with the Knights in tries, try assists, line breaks and average run meters. Kalen is still one of the elite fullbacks of the comp, but he just needs some help and he needs to stay healthy if he is to reach that potential of the top three fullbacks in the competition. In the fifth spot, it's the Penrith Panthers with Dylan Edwards. Previously ninth was also Dylan Edwards. The Panthers' number one has had a spectacular year so far in 2022 and has pushed himself into the top level of fullbacks. Not a flashy player by any means, but insanely consistent and durable, who makes the tough carries every game. His support play is excellent and he's currently averaging a career high in run meters and tries and is well on his way to break other PBs and other attacking stats. His tackling efficiency at 89% is his best of his career, one of the best returns defensively from any fullback in the NRL. With the Panthers in deep injury trouble for the majority of 2022, Edwards has been one of their stars and will be essential come finals time. Edwards has been one of the biggest improvers over the past year for sure, and it wouldn't even be surprising to me if he pushes into that top three in the near future. In the fourth spot for the Melbourne Storm, it's Ryan Pappenhausen, previously second on the list was also Ryan Pappenhausen. Pappenhausen, after his immense 2020 season where he won the Clive Churchill medal and the Premiership, has struggled significantly to stay on the field over the past two years. Even with the drop-off in the rankings, Pappy's play has not decreased. He's still an elite back that possesses insane speed and a great motor. He's a prolific try scorer at the back that has developed a passing game match by a few at the fullback position. By the year's end, unfortunately, he would have missed 23 games over the past two regular seasons, with the majority of that being because of reoccurring concussions. Now suffering from a severe knee injury, hopefully Pappenhausen can return back to his former self and push back into the top three fullbacks in the NRL. In the third spot, it's the South Sydney Rabbitohs with Latrell Mitchell. Previously 10th on the list was also Latrell Mitchell. One of the biggest movers on this list and a selection that many disagreed with in the previous video prior to the 2021 season, 
Luttrell really hadn't played much at fullback in 2020 and really hadn't shown a motor that sufficed for the position. In all honesty, there are still some worries with Mitchell, as he's so talented, but he seems to choose when he wants to be assertive. But in 2022, he seems to be asserting himself a lot more. Coming back from the USA looking fit, Mitchell has an opportunity to alter his legacy by carrying this bunny side to a premiership. Putting him this high on this list might be controversial, but Mitchell is unstoppable. He's not an Edwards type fullback that will make the tough carries and lead the games in run meters, but he has silky ball skills and is powerful. The Bunnies look like a different side with Mitchell in it, winning the vast majority of their games when he is healthy. The question is, can he stay healthy and disciplined? I feel the next stretch of 2022 will solidify where he will rank. In the number two spots, the Manly Warringa Seagulls with the Tom Travojevic, previously 12th, was also Tom Travojevic. The biggest mover of anyone on this list is Tommy Turbo. He's been a beast over the past two seasons. Tommy's 2021 was truly spectacular, like honestly amazing. I look like a clown for ranking him at 12th in early 2021. To be fair, I said he was a top three talent at the time, but he had barely played prior to that season, but now he's shown us what he could do over a season of good health. His 2022 season has ended early yet again, but he's proven himself already to the rest of the league that he's a stud. Mainly who were a contender last year have fallen dramatically since Turbo's injury. 2023 will be a year again where Tom will need to stay healthy, otherwise he'll fall back to being labelled as injury prone like he was prior to that 2021 season. An injury free Turbo is truly special, we need him back. In the number one spot for the Sydney Roosters, it's James Tedesco. Previously first was also James Tedesco. He's still the GOAT when it comes to fullbacks. Consistent, durable, and class. In every area we rate fullbacks, Tedesco leads in many. A tackle-breaking freak that leads the entire league. One of the elite kick returners who scores assists at a rate that not many players in the NRL can match. He's consistent in all areas and really sits clear as number one at the fullback position. At 29, you might expect him to have slowed down or to drop off, but he really hasn't. He's all over the field all the time and was clearly New South Wales' best player yet again in the Origin Arena. Premiership with the Roosters could elevate his legacy to the greatest fullback of all time. I mean, he's close. Tedesco remains one of the NRL greats and the best fullback in the NRL. Okay, so that concludes this re-ranking of fullbacks in 2022 in the NRL. Remember, this list is subjective and I have a huge respect for any athlete that is capable of starting in the NRL. If you have any alterations to these rankings, let me know in the comments. I'll be liking and pinning my favorite ones. Also, don't forget if you want more Australian sports lists, mini documentaries and discussion videos, subscribe, like and comment. 